OK, so let's talk about um, another application in using this template. And this is something I don't talk a lot about, but we have some great tools from Studio Stage that are able to make this happen. And that's using drone pads with your tracks. Now, this is definitely something that I see happen more often than not in a church worship setting more than any other type of setting. But it's this idea of using um, pads alongside of your tracks. Now, um, a couple things I want to say. What a lot of times people do is use audio tracks, audio pads that have been rendered to make this happen. That's a solution if you want to do that. But I would suggest using the pad player. If you're watching this, you're either a student. Um, I mean, you are a student that is subscribed, so you get access to the pad, pad player for free. Uh, if not, and you're watching this somehow, uh, then you can purchase the pad player if you're not a student. Um, but what the pad player is, let me take you over to Ableton Live to show you. Um, it, it, it is a preset uh, device for Ableton Live that's preloaded with pads in every single key. So the way I would suggest working with this is let's say we're doing uh, You Keep Coming After Me. This is in the key of C. What I'm going to do is take this clip that's in C. I'm going to drag this in. And I think this is preset to run, I believe, for 20 minutes. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but it's going to run for a while there, about 12 minutes. And I could lengthen that if I needed to. Um, but then I'm going to go into my next song here. And I've kind of temporarily disabled my stop in my song four clips. Uh, my next song, Our God is Live, I believe is in G. And so I'm going to take this clip and I want this transition to happen kind of over the outro here. And C to G is a pretty simple transition. So I'm going to just layer those keys on top of each other there. Uh, and then this next song is in the key of D. So again, not a bad transition from the key of G. But we'll lay this uh, right over here uh, for this ending. Okay, Let's do one more, which is a little trickier. Uh, from the key of D into E flat. So we're going to grab D sharp, which is the inharmonic equivalent. Uh, we're going to drop this. Well, yeah, let's start it right there. OK. And then we're going to go with that. Now, then what I want to do is at the end of this song, um, I want just this pad to keep going. So I'm going to take our click and turn this, uh, turn this off. So we're going to make this shorter and then get rid of our ending here. And then we have pad that's just gonna keep going. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add a repeat track here. So I'm gonna uh, extend this so that we get to the end. And uh, again, this pad is just going to continue to infinitely loop at the end here. So let's start our set, okay, uh, with this pad loaded in. And I should show you in the pad player, a couple settings, I'm kind of running through this quickly, but a couple settings, I'm gonna increase our fade time I have multiple different sounds I can choose from, and we have expansion packs for this as well too. I can add a little bit of motion if I want some more movement. Uh, I have a filter, and this can be shaped in real time. I can add an octave and a fifth if I want to. And again, shape the pad sound in real time with the filter as well too. So um, let's press play and let's see what happens. So I can open the filter up if I wanted. Uh, another thing that's great is I could map all these commands. I could do Command M and map these with a MIDI controller if I wanted. Um, okay, so then let's jump ahead to the end here. I forgot my tracks are off, which is fine. So let's turn them on. So tell it's still a fairly smooth transition because of that. We'll leave my filter. Let's jump ahead. Let's get to the end about here. Okay, so we get to the end of this. And I can open the filter if I wanted. This is kind of a low, kind of somber moment, so I'm probably gonna keep the filter closed. I might even bring some of my octave out. Okay, to make that kind of a better transition. Then let's go to the end of this now. Let's jump to around here. So you can see one thing that's nice is I pre-programmed this so that this is going to continue. Um, 
a couple things that are great about this. Let's say, um, let's get to the end of this song, just like we talked about first. Let's do that. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on this repeat track here. Okay, and what's going to happen... So our pad is going to keep going. Let's take our click out, actually. So we just have pad that keeps going here. We can close our filter a little, increase our fade time if we want. So we have kind of this nice element that's going to keep going um, as we get to the end of the song if we want to keep our pad going. I mean, we could 100% keep click going here if we wanted. Right? So this is a moment where, you know, click is going to keep going. Let's actually turn our accent on so it will be a little easier to hear one. Okay. And then what's great about this is I still have over with my MIDI controller, I still have previous and next mapped. We talked about this in the spontaneous, being spontaneous with tracks section of this. So as my pad is continuing to go, uh, we can just keep click going. Okay. And then at any point, let's say we want to jump back to the bridge. Let's jump here. And we have a smooth transition back into the bridge. Uh, and typically this is kind of something that happens again in, in like a worship scenario. This is something that typically happens when we create a quote unquote flow moment where we get to the end of the song, click keeps going, we want to jump back in. Um, and we typically jump back in without tracks and it's awkward. Well with this, again, it's super easy. Let's just keep click going, let's keep pad going if we want to. Um, and we can just keep that section going. We could even take the repeat clip out and just keep our click going if we want to like this for just kind of an endless pad that's gonna go, I don't know how many more minutes, tons and tons of time uh, if we want to. And then we just use that previous locator button um, to navigate to whatever section we want. We could also, if we wanted to uh, manually map to uh, a locator here, uh, if I had enough buttons on my MIDI controller. But let's say the worship leader, uh, you know, is kind of rounding the corner and they say, let's sing that bridge again. I just press that and I jump back over back into the bridge. And it's a perfectly smooth transition, which is super, super nice. Um, and so that's a look at how we can use drone pads alongside of our tracks in a, a, a way that um, can allow for a lot of spontaneity, can fill out your sound really easily. Let me show you one more thing in particular with the pad player that uh, I think is pretty cool. So um, let's say we've just kind of stopped and we're waiting for our set to start for uh, our song to start. Um, what I can do is I can go over here to the pad player and I have all of these clips uh, that I can work with. And let's actually, let's drag these clips in here. All right, so let's do this. We're gonna drag all of these guys right into our pad player uh, right here. So what I could do is if I have a MIDI controller, I can map to each of these individual clips or let's say at the start of uh, my set, I can just go over here uh, scroll over to the things and I know my first song's in the key of C. So I'm going to go ahead and trigger that. Okay, so I can kind of start that pad before the song starts if I want to. Or what I could do is, uh, let's say we have just a moment where um, instead of that pad going up front, and you can hear this is kind of a good example, uh, I accidentally left the repeat track on and so the pad is continuing to go in that section which again works and makes for a smooth transition and then I can take the repeat off and we can jump right ahead again the whole time I can you know, add some dynamic with the filter if I want to which is nice but then uh, what's cool about this is let's say we get in a scenario where uh, we end up killing tracks so we use our fade out command to measure fade out we fade out tracks well we can keep our uh, pad going um, by just leaving that that clip going let's say we automatically um, in the moment we keep the click going and we go you know what? we need to get to uh, we need to get to living hope so I'm gonna go ahead and trigger this okay wait for that transition to happen okay I'm gonna go ahead and trigger that and then let's get over to living hope Uh, and then let's fade our tracks back in. Uh, two measure fade back in. Mm -hmm. 
right? And so you can see there's tons of flexibility and even spontaneity within that by using those pads. So we can go from nothing, adding our pads, killing our tracks with the fade out, keeping the pad going if we want to change keys and get us to another song. And again, I, you know, I'm limited in the options I have with this MIDI controller, but if you had a controller with enough things to map, I mean, you can map all of that, never touch your computer and have tons and tons of control over your content just from your MIDI controller, which is super, super powerful.